So in our third match, if I check chat real quick, we're going to do the Nottingham Super Major. You know, I understand these people, the top four is the top bracket. I understand that everybody likes to hear about the undefeated, but I wanted to hear about the top performing orc player who ended up also being the top performing um, non undefeated player so at number 13 he did drop one game but he has three 100s in a 99 so he almost has four perfect games and then one loss so i thought it was very important that we look at him uh it could be very informative regardless so let's look at brian brian's list like we said he did really good so let's see what this very efficient list did he has a beast boss on squigasaur a war boss on bike with super cyborg body. So why did he do that? I believe it's literally to the point he did not have five more points to make that a death killer war trike. I'm thinking that's why he didn't do it. Um, I think that's a sleeper pick. You know, a lot of people know the death killer war trike is really good. A war boss on war bike is just slightly less wounds. Um, doesn't have the shooting profiles, you know, the flamer and such, but a way smaller base. So we have two war bosses, two war bosses in mega armor with one of them having cunning but brutal. Then we have Captain Badrook and Mazrog's bag what i want to point out here is no ed wampus kill chopper between eight orc characters boom right and no squig hog boy not on smash squig so he went for just straight up war boss on bike double beast boss on squig uh, beast boss on squig score and a miles rod scrag bag that means you have four feel no pains a four plus on this list but it's much cheaper than bringing another beast boss on squig score plus you have the speed and the smaller base of the war boss on bike um and then he has a two armor bo war bosses megan armor so here we see those gets again five trucks so a different version of kind of like an orc spam truck spam not necessarily orc truck spam because the truck spam likes to bring nine if it can or it likes to bring five plus a battle wagon whatever but this is bringing five trucks i like to bring five trucks i have on my list too it feels very good only one of battle line just one battle line is just straight boys a flash get unit 220 man the 210 man units of gretchen which is actually a lemon i know that and then two five man units of knobs here this guy brought two units of five twin kill saws that's what i like to see that's how i like to see it run and then we have two Five man units of knobs with power claws. Uh, you know, we've seen this all over the place. We saw Naden do it. We've seen got you know Blake Kilton, I believe, did this. We've seen a bunch of different gits that are running just the smaller units of scapel. So instead of bringing a big, nice, sharp scapel to take out a big limb, maybe they're bringing out something smaller, maybe to just pull out a little organ or something, really take out the beating heart of an enemy army. So keep that in mind as we look at his matchups. So let's look at his first matchup. These first three games are is a 100, a 100, and a 99. So pretty much three 100. So let's look at this. First matchup blood angels with a vanguard spearhead list blood angels can be slept on so even though they're not the most meta meta um usually they're diehard players and of course the first matchup in some events you're going to get some weird lists so captain the jump pack blade living uh driven a chaplain with a jump pack lamardis and then lieutenant with combi weapons uh two ball three ballistas dreadnoughts death company with jump packs another jump pack inceptors infiltrators a unit of sanguinary guard and then scouts so on this list you notice the only two things that are coming out to really deal with orcs are sang my sanguinary guard and the death company marines um most pretty much just a big man unit this is a five man unit with thunder hammers but just about anything on an orc army can really start to deal with those guys um you know what i'm talking about with like skirmishing kind of units so they are very effective when they get the initiative on you but this is where they just would run out of steam running into an orc thing that's what happens with blood angels for the most part in that kind of matchup is they run out of steam because they only have so many death stars you've seen how nasty how many expensive that sanguinary guard brick was so they just get kind of traded out too quickly um then we have of world eaters very competitive army as a whole uh faction that's how i would say as a whole but orcs seem to have the tools to deal with them as well as long as you're good with your screening you know moving the grots up the field to kind of deal with them um stuff like that so we have angron karn the betrayal you got to deal with the karn being able to take out your characters lord invacanis uh world eaters lord on juggernaut with favored by corn so you can try to re-roll those dice and then the master of indirect combat is like i like to call him so the master of execution with berserker's glaive we have the jackals with their sticky objective capability a corn um berserkers these the five i assume this five man unit is for our boy uh karn the betrayer and then the 10 man unit is to execute uh, uh, you know to escort that 10 man the, 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 the sorry the master of executions so we have two rhinos an eight bound unit an exalted two an exalted eight bound unit and then a large six man unit of exalted eight bound very common typical world leaders list no fat on it um i think when they bring brigands they actually get a little bit better better they really do heavily rely on can angron come back or not so the matchup gets significantly harder if he does because you can end up losing your fighting uh your throttling capability to kill him early if he fights on death and then he also comes back it can become difficult but if he doesn't you just kind of run them over so i don't know what happened there but world leaders are definitely no then we have eldar 
as his third matchup. Let's see how typical this list is. We have the Artark Wayleaper with the Phoenix Gem. We have the Fugin, so with these guys can get back up. And then we have the Spirit Seer with Fate Messenger, and then Yarin Khan. Uh, two Night Spinner, so the Yarin Khan can appear anywhere on the battlefield when he indirects you. Uh, Shadow Spectre, Shadow Spectre, Swooping Hawk, Warp Spiders, uh, another Warp Spider, U3, Small Warp, and then the Wraith Guard Brick with Wraith Cannon. So I think the melee ones are more annoying for Orcs, uh, but the Wraith Guard Cannon, you know, this is something that they'll, they'll look at Mazgrog and they'll be like, I'm going to annihilate. And you're like, I guess if you feel like it, it's kind of not even, not a concern for me. <laughs> so the, the only thing that really bothers us is really, where is your Karn going to appear? Don't let her appear in your backline by killing your Grop. Um, this might be where you have to be more effective as an Orc player and understand, hey, I'm going to get reduced my move movement here. Um, you know, I, but my cheap baby stuff that's going to be running around the battlefields, I'd be able to kill you like a truck running up to one of these small units and then hitting with tank shot can start picking up some of these Eldar units in a funny way as a whole. Um, something that Eldar hate is actually the flash kits and Captain Badrug. You start telling them, hey, I'm going to get out. Personally, this highlight to play them. Some people bring them off from reserves Um, the flash kits to keep them safe. I actually tend to um, put them somewhere where I want to cover a lane against Eldar. I'll disembark them from their transport and then when Eldar start to occupy that space on their turn just overwatch them i'll be like here you go i'm gonna start overwatching your units and killing them and then when i do shoot and i'm standing there i can sometimes split my fire and actually kill two different Eldar units if they're exposed so that strength six and just volume and sustain just becomes obnoxious because they die so easily so that throws them on the back foot when you can do that and we have the ability to kill the incarn so orcs can do good into them you just have to be wise as how you're playing into them the trucks will help you um for staging and hiding a little bit but eldar have enough movement to try to kill you so when you do get blown up disembark behind cover they'll take a couple shots from indirect they'll be slowing you down but as a whole keep the pressure on eldar put them on the back foot um they they, they can't combine arms into you so they can't shoot and fight you besides you and Karn. So once that happens, you're just like, bye. And then what's this fourth matchup? Sorry, let's see this fourth matchup. Here is, because that was his third, right? Make sure I didn't mess that up. Yeah, that was his third matchup. Now his fourth matchup, which he did lose, which if you're, you know, been watching the channel and you know, this is one of the Orcs' hardest matchups on paper. Astra Militarum. So he did lose his one game to Astra Militarum, which if you look at his score, um, this guy was going to, was definitely going for undefeated, top placing, trying to get 500 points flat, and he ended up dropping the Astra Militarum. So let's look at this Astra Militarum timeless we have lord solo leontis so he gives you the ability to redeploy and get free cp um so we don't we don't like to see that <laughs> a platoon command squad the one thing i'm going to point out here is it does have like a nice little mortar like we talked like to talk about super annoying as an orc player to deal with a little mortar sorry i'm looking over here i want to look at his list one more and bring his list out while i go over this death guard list um then we have one two tank commanders ursula creed so ursula creed creed i was a creed <laughs> ursula creed's a bit different uh, uh, different but what she can do is she, when she's leading a unit she can have that unit have two different orders at the same time and then she also has once per battle round she can pick um an army a unit within 12 and then they use a stratagem for zero cp even if someone's already used that strategy so guard already ha already have a great cp like access and such like that so that's just compounding on that we have the catachans for their scouting uh death Corps krieg unit now here is a funny little twist two units of bulgren shout out to mr two always hating on them uh mr bulgren are super annoying because they're punching typically does nothing to a lot of different factions but orcs having an odd strength and minus one ap is good enough you know just punch us in the head and that's good enough to kill a couple of our units they reduce damage which we really really hate and then they also get grid armor saves with a good toughness so having two bulgren breaks is actually a direct hard matchup for orcs and you can see our get our, our war boss here had mega knobs captain bad rook uh war bosses a war boss a bike a beast boss and uh, uh masrog and he couldn't chew through these bulgrins effectively or efficiently this is where something that i'd like to see hey maybe a gas could help you here um not that i think it would have won him the game i'm just saying that's where I, another tech piece why i choose gas but i don't think you know going forward i'm not saying that's the answer to everything um then we have the kazarkin so the kazarkin they're a little weird they have a scouting six as well in the command phase they can choose an order to be affected from themselves so pretty much give themselves an order and then someone can give them an order too so that's another two different orders on one same unit so you have two different of these guys that can do that uh three sorry we have three different units that can do this so just getting orders to themselves and then ursula's giving someone two orders and then you know blah 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 so everybody's getting orders then we have two manticores with their three uh sorry three manticores with their nice awesome flat damage three indirect then two scout sentinels that way they can enhance those manticores indirect ability or just getting away from orcs we hate to see that um i think i can just see because this is like a how this list is built this guy was a very effective player no you know you're gonna see this in a matchup and be like eh, i don't know 
know about that. And then you're like, oh, shoot, this guy's just, what's going on here? He's effectively boxing me out. He's effectively bringing units back. Uh, he's scoring his fixed mission secondaries, and he's killing me. So um, interesting how he ended up dropping that list. It was a close matchup. He's a 76. And I believe, what's again? Let me get his name, uh, Nassim. Ended up getting right here, 89. That was the score. So it was a good game, you know, but he ended up dropping that game. No, no shame in that. Guarded are a very difficult matchup. A lot of time people are like, swarm them, put them on their back foot. You know, if they can actually hold that Bulgren wall, score their fixed secondaries, they can shoot you back. They do have enough activations. They do have enough small arms fire. Their lack of AP normally is their weakness and they're hitting on fours, but against orcs, you know, the, the lack of AP doesn't hurt them. So now let's look at his final matchup, which he ended up getting 100 points into, is again, we actually see this corn demons list. So you want to get familiar with this corn demons list um, and its weird, unique rules between the, the Red Master's Throne and Bellicor. Um, but then we have, this one actually has two Nurglings, some Blood Crushers, um, Flesh Hounds, so very similar, and then two Skull Cannons. So Skull Cannons, I, I don't think those guys are the most effective, but hey, you know, he brought them because he brought them. So great job to Brian Seep for getting uh, almost per four 100s and then just getting a 76, which is still a good score when you lose a game. Nothing to be ashamed.